was a big, fluffy, tortoiseshell cat. He lived with the head shepherd at Te Apati Station in a large house on the hill. Nobody knows where no go goes, the kids at Kamahi School said when the bus went by in the morning. The school bus always turned at the end of the road at Te Apati Station and the kids would often see the fluffy orange cat sitting out in the sun, warming himself before his day's adventures. Everybody at Kamahi School knew that Nogo was a mighty hunter. He never bothered with catching mice except as a kind of snack. Nogo went for big prey. He liked creeping around in the bush and tracking down the grey rats living there. Teopati Station had lots of patches of bush, so there were many places Nogo could hunt in. When Nogo sneaked around in the bush, he could look out on the cleared farmland of Teopati Station. He was looking for rabbits and hares. The rabbits liked to come out in the evenings, seeking fresh patches of grass. While they were busy nibbling away, Nogo sneaked up on them and pounced. But Nogo didn't stop there. At various spots around Te Apati Station, hares would sit in their secret hiding places, gazing out on the world. Nogo was very clever at tracking. With his inquisitive whiskers and his big pointy ears, he could find the hares' hiding places and spring on them. So Nogo lived a very contented life in the big house on the hill with the head shepherd and all his family. But there came a day when Te Apati Station was no longer able to pay the wages of a head shepherd. So he packed up and went off to another job far off in a distant part of New Zealand. Somehow or other, no girl got left behind. Maybe the big cat was out on a particularly exciting hunt that day. When he came back, the big house he'd lived in all his life was empty. Nobody knows where no go goes, the kids at Carmahy's school sang when they saw the cat sitting outside his empty house as the bus went by in the morning. The strange thing was that no go didn't seem to care. He went on living at the house. He slept on a pile of old sacks on the veranda and went on catching rats and rabbits and hares for his daily food, the way he'd always done. The weeks and the months slipped by, and Nogo's house started to look rather run down. Moss grew on the south side, the gutters on the roof blocked, and rain trickled in under the eaves. There's only one thing to do with that old place, the station manager said one day. I better sell it. He rang up a removal company, who came and examined the house. The old house was built in two stories and was too big to shift in one piece. We can take the top story off and move that, said the removal men. Then we can come back for the rest. So this was done. The removal company took the top half down to the beach below Carmahy School, where some people bought it for the holiday home. The bottom half went 30 kilometres up the road and became the farmhouse on the new farm, right at the end of Steve the bus driver's run. Now, no go had been away in the bush all the time his house was being shifted. And when he came back home, after his mighty hunting adventures, there was no house for him. Nogo was really surprised. He wandered about in the mess of old bottles, tin cans and bits of wood that were all that remained of the house. There was no sign of the cosy veranda he'd lived on for so long, or the comfy pile of old sacks he'd loved to snooze amongst in the warm sun. Nobody knows where no go goes, the kids from Carmahy's school said next morning when their bus went by and they looked up the hill to where the shepherd's house had been. Sure enough, there was no sign of no go anywhere. No one saw no go for weeks after that. It seemed he'd gone forever. But one day, all the kids from Carmahy's school were down on the beach having a game of softball. The tide was out and the game was being played on the hard, wet sand. 
one of the kids in Form 2 hit the softball a good hard belt. It went flying over the beach, up the sand dunes and under the house that had recently been put there. When somebody went to get the ball, they found a big tortoiseshell cat under the house as well. It's no-go, someone yelled. Hello, no-go, everybody cried, clustering round and giving him plenty of strokes and cuddles. No-go, where you been, the kids said. The big cat couldn't talk, but it was quite clear what he'd been up to. The house he was living under was the top half of the shepherd's house from the Arpity station. When the kids went back to school, they had to spend a long afternoon writing a story for their teacher about where No-Go had been. Nobody knows where No-Go goes, the kids said irritably to their teacher. So how can we write a story about it? But their teacher, like teachers everywhere, knew best, and they had to write the story after all. After school, there was no sign of No-Go down at the beach or under his house. He's gone again, the kids said as they trooped onto the bus and headed off up the road. No-go was gone for several weeks. Then a strange thing happened. Up at the far end of Steve's bus run, there was a cluster of houses. This was where Steve turned his bus and began his run back towards the beach and calm his school. One morning, Steve was waiting at the terminus. He was a little bit early, so he just sat in his driver's seat, waiting for the time to slip away. As he idly stared through the bus window, he noticed a woman come out of one of the houses nearby. She was in a very bad mood. She was carrying a bowl of water in her hands, and she stamped onto the veranda and yelled at the top of her voice, "'You wretched beast! How many times must I tell you not to come sneaking round here? Get away with you!' She hurled the basin of water, and as she did so, a big tortoiseshell cat leapt from the veranda and went scampering down the drive towards Steve's bus. It's no go, Steve said to himself. He got out of the bus and picked the big cat up in his arms. Is that your cat? the woman yelled. No, just a friend, Steve replied. Well, tell your friend to keep away from here. Nasty, sneaky thing, it creeps onto my veranda every night. I don't want the pest. She stamped inside the house and slammed the door. Steve recognised the bottom half of the shepherd's house from Te Apati Station. Come on, no go, he said. There's nothing for you here. He put the cat down on a seat in his bus, and away they went along the road, picking up the Kamahi school children at all the stops. All the kids were very glad to see No-Go once more. When they reached the school, they took him down to his beach house and left him contentedly licking himself by the back door. For several days, No-Go stayed there, but then one day he was gone. This time, however, everyone knew where No-Go went. Sure enough, in a few days' time, the big cat turned up at the other end of the bus run. One morning, Steve found him snuggled down in his usual place on the veranda of the shepherd's old house. There was no sign of the irritable housewife. You can't stay here, no-go, said Steve, picking the big cat up and carrying him back to the bus. After that, Steve got into the habit of looking out for no-go. On several mornings during the next few months, he took the cat back down the road to the beach. By now, Nogo seemed like a regular passenger on the bus, and all the kids really enjoyed his company. But in the end, there came a time when Nogo was seen no more. He wasn't down at his beach house, or up the road at his country estate. As usual, nobody knew where he'd got to. Maybe he's gone off to find the shepherd and his family, the kids said. Maybe he'll go on travelling until he finds them. But they knew this really wasn't true. They knew without saying that Nogo had gone back to his old love 
and even now was hunting the wild rabbits and the hares and the big grey rats somewhere far off in the bush at the back of Teopity Station. Nobody knows where no go goes, the kids at Carmahee's school said to each other. And that's the way it's always going to be. Thank you.